Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode two of Be With Me in the Book of Second Thessalonians. Hang on to your hats today because we are going to explore and get to the place where we can marvel at the real superhero. And the topic, the big topic, is God's judgment, God's wrath. And it's going to affect believers and unbelievers. So we're going to talk about four things, then we're going to get to marveling. Here are the four things. We're going to talk about how God's judgment affects believers now. Then we're going to talk about how it affects believers later. Then we're going to talk about how it affects non-believers now. And then uh, how it affects non-believers later. And then finally, we're going to stand back in awe at all these things. So this is from 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter number one, and we're going to start in verse five. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God. What's evidence that the believers are enduring? This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering. Since indeed God, cons- God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to grant relief to you who are afflicted, as well as to us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. That's the then part. In flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord, from the glory of his might. When he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at, among all who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. So let's talk about believers first, and then we're going to talk about unbelievers. Okay, so believers, the verses before this talked about the Thessalonians enduring persecutions and afflictions. So how does this affect believers and uh, believers currently? The part that affects us now is that God is giving us and helping us with our endurance part of it. He's helping us to be steadfast, helping our faith during affliction. That he even considers us worthy of kingdom suffering. So how God's judgment affects us now is in helping us to hang in there during anti-kingdom persecutions and affliction. And this confirms that we're on the right team, that we're on the family of God. And uh, and eventually that we get to enjoy God's character. So how does it affect Christians? How does it affect believers later? later? He tells us in this passage that there's going to be complete relief from all these afflictions. All the persecutions, all the afflictions will end. So that's the good news. The even better news is that Christians get to be with God that his character qualities are going to be manifested uh, in a more uh, present way, in a more visible way, and believers are going to be able to stand there and marvel at it. So what God does now and what God does later in the believer confirms a wonderful aspect of God's character, that is his justice and his wrath. And of course, God is opposed to all who work to thwart his glory, <clears throat> Yet he allows persecutions and affliction currently, I'll grant you that, but he's opposed to it later and he's going to grant complete relief. He's going to give godly justice, godly judgment, godly punishment, godly wrath. And the believers are going to stand there and marvel at his character. All right, so how does this affect the non believer? the people that don't know God, that don't obey the gospel. Well, how does it affect them now? One thing is in finding the targets of their affliction, the targets of their persecutions, that they're going to have an otherworldly steadfastness. And they're going to ask, the non-believers are going to ask as they persecute, what in the world causes them to never give up, to maybe even go to their deaths? The answer is nothing in this world will cause that. It's help from another world. Who are these people that will never get up, give up? They're, they're believers, and they're believers getting supernatural help. All right, so how does it affect them later? This passage talks a lot about that. And these, the non-believers and the persecutors are going to get uh, affliction. And 
Jesus is going to be revealed. It's on this armies out day of the Lord where he comes back with his angels. In a sense, it's going to be a surprise. On the other hand, it's not a surprise at all. He told us all about it. He said it was very predictable. Just the timing of it was unpredictable. And the the non-believers are going to witness his people waking up, rising up, being brought up, and then finally being with him. And then the big punishment for the non-believers is that they're going to be taken away from the presence of the Lord. There's also some nasty terminology, flaming fire, inflicting vengeance, suffering, punishment, eternal destruction, away from the presence of the Lord again, away from the glory of his might. So things obviously to avoid. So we find here today, in conclusion, four different things. God's judgment affects believers now in endurance. God affects, God's judgment affects believers later in complete relief, in complete resolution, and the complete presence of the God. God's judgment affects non-believers now because they're opposing something that they're finding is otherworldly and supernatural, and it's going to affect them later with judgment, fire, punishment, etc. Okay, so what, what the conclusion point is, what should we be doing about this? I think this passage leans in and just emphasizes is believe the testimony. Why? So that you could be one that stands there and marvels uh, a, a bit. So the, the action verb in this whole thing is to be marveling. So what should we be marveling at? I think we can marvel past tense at what the at the cross and what Jesus did for us. Uh, this passage doesn't really talk about that very much. It does talk about marveling at what God is enduring, what God is doing currently, and that's helping believers with enduring and helping believers with steadfastness amidst difficult time. And then finally, the big part of this passage is a future. What should we be marveling at? We should be marveling at the future, at the justice of God, about what he is going to do, that he's going to bring believers into his presence. First Thessalonians 5 talks about that a lot. And it's going to be taking the the unrighteous, the non-believers, the people that have been hostile, hostile to God, it's going to give them exactly what they've been asking for, which is separation from God and taking them away from his presence. So there's lots to marvel at here today. And my charge to all of us is let's believe this testimony now, why we have opportunity. Believe today. Thanks for listening.